Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is the amazing premiere of The Talented and Terrific 2, a podcast hosted by yours truly, Sam Weiss and... John Weiss, Sam's dad. And this podcast is going to be all about our family experiences, fun, uh, one-on-one with my dad experiences, and uh, just a lot of crazy and fun stuff in between, like um, fun experiences on road trips. So, if you go to enjoy, make sure to do three things. Subscribe like, and turn on post notifications. And without any further ado, let's get into it. You want to start us off, Dan? Uh, sure. This is the first time I've ever done a podcast, so I'm not quite sure what to do. Sam, on the other hand, has done like 127? Uh, I've done seven. Well, six-ish. Six or seven. Well, oh, I meant not podcasts. YouTube posts, 127. Yes. Uh, YouTube posts, 127 may... Call one thirty. One thirty. So Sam has a lot of experience doing this. I've never done this before, so I'm not quite sure what to do. Sam, can you tell us a little bit about how you go about making a podcast? Well, there's one thing is this. You just gotta have the conversation flow. I've made this mistake before, but you simply just wanna sit and whatever comes to mind, say. You don't wanna be like, so what should we talk about? What should we do? You just wanna go with it. And I've done that before, sure. And another tip is don't talk too much, which I made that mistake. <laughs> I'm not sure if this video is going to be posted by the time it comes out, and it probably won't. But episode of f- five of the podcast, I think, that Jackson and I, Couch Talk, did over Google Meet. I talk too much, and I cut him off too much. So in this podcast, and podcast with him and moving forward, I'm not going to talk as much, hopefully, and not cut off that much. So that's the plan. Very good. So what should we start out talking about? What should we start out? Um, well, uh, you know what we could talk about? What? I was thinking. Ah, uh, my leg. Well, about two weeks ago, I was walking in the park with Barnold. That's our dog, Barney. We call him Barnold. Sometimes we call him the snowman. And because uh, Sam named him Barnold the snowman. So yeah. we either call him Barnold. Snow. Yeah, Barnold or the snowman or Bartholomew or good sir. And anyway, I was walking him, and um, I was entering the park. There was some ice. I didn't see it. I slipped. I fell. I broke my leg. I broke both the bones in my lower leg. Those are the tibia and fibula. And I had to get picked up by the ambulance, put into an ambulance, taken to the hospital. And the next day I had surgery. They had to put a titanium rod into my uh tibia to hold it together and then had to put screws in it. I have pictures of the x-rays. Sam, did you see the x-rays? Yes, I, I, okay. think, I think many times. Yeah, and um, I was in the hospital for another day. Now I'm home and it's a little slow going. Um, it's kind of sore. I have to wear this awesome boot. Like, looks like maybe something from outer space yeah. and maybe like an astronaut would wear. And, um, you know, it's kind of sore. I can't put a lot of weight on it. Uh, I have to use a walker to get around. I'm kind of tired. I don't have as much energy as usual. So I don't like it very much. Um, But I'm doing the best I can. And I start physical therapy tomorrow on uh, Monday the 22nd. And, you know, I'll just have to be patient and it'll heal and get better. So that's about that. Yeah, I I definitely agree. I mean, it must have been. was Was it more... Uh, fear or pain when it happened? Uh, it was pain, you know, and I was worried. Like, I could tell I couldn't get up. I could just feel like there was something very wrong in my leg. I could feel it got swollen right away. And I could just tell that it was messed up. So it was like fear and pain. The pain wasn't horrible, but it was pretty bad. Yeah, I bet so. I, at least we're lucky that, you know, you had your phone on you so you could call mom and everything. Yeah, because I was thinking, like, what if I didn't have my phone? It was early in the morning. I was laying on the sidewalk in the park. No one was around, and I was just laying there. You and no one came. been there. Right, and if I didn't have my phone, then mom either would have eventually wondered where I was, but that would take a while, and maybe had come out looking for me, or more likely, if I didn't have my phone, I would have had to have started yelling for help, and someone would have come out of their house to help me. And also alongside that, I feel like somebody probably would have ventured in there, 
and like be like, oh shoot, there's a guy, there's a guy on the ground. What should I do now? Right. And someone would probably end up helping you. Yeah. But um, I, I'm not sure if this is like a good thing coming out of it. Nothing really good really came out of it. But the hospital food, most people hate it. You liked it, right? Uh, I did. The hospital food was very good. Um, so that was a pleasant surprise, and the hospital was nice. Nurses were nice. It was comfortable. So you know, all in all, I can't complain. Made the best out of a bad situation. Yes, that's I think that's yeah. I agree. I mean, he's been he's been a great uh, a great patient yeah. for mom and I. Uh, it's definitely been different. We you know uh, it's it, it hasn't been. I'm not. I don't want to say fun. I want to say more or less like active. I guess right in a way that not even like you know active like biking, playing you know running tennis. Uh, I feel like more or less like doing things together, but we still get to do fun things like watch movies, watch TV shows. Dad and I watch and Breaking Bad together, and you know he sometimes comes downstairs for dinner. He may do that t- tonight. He's not feeling great. We may not. Uh, but or um, just sitting around and talking. Yeah, sitting around and talking, just like we are doing now. Making podcasts. This is one good thing. Our first podcast together. Yeah, I mean, I, I <laughs> wonder how much you know. Maybe we'll eventually branch out and when. His, his uh, um, whole situation with his life, right. eventually, we'll, we'll continue doing podcasts, um, you know, until, I, I don't know when, maybe, you know, I've been thinking about, like, Couch Talk with Jackson lately, like, are we going to do that for only a little bit, and make it off the air, like, let's talk about that with Sam and Jackson, which actually went off the air for a reason, not just because we wanted to end it, because it didn't work out, really, but, um, I mean, you know, maybe are we going to do it until high school, college? Farther, have thousands of episodes, like the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, which has been going since December 24th, 2009, and is going and wow. still today, I believe. Or I think it may have ended February 23rd, I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, I mean, all, all in all, I just want to see what the road takes us with podcasts, with Slag, and everything in between. Yeah, maybe, like, if we keep doing the podcast... Like, in a couple of months, we'll say, hey, remember when my leg was broken? Look now, it's normal. I can walk and everything's back to normal. Yeah, that's true. And I feel like a good way to, like, want, to, like, for the viewers to really want another podcast would be usually, ladies and gentlemen, each podcast will be uploaded once a week. So, Couch Talk on Fridays. We'll talk with Sam Weiss. It's the solo podcast just with me on Saturdays. And then the Talented and Terrific 2, this thing. Um, will, you know, be on Sundays. Sundays? Sundays, every okay. Sunday. So we'll, we'll probably record, do you think, one episode every Sunday? Yeah, one episode every Sunday. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be able to see the progression I make in healing on my leg. So yes, it's something it'll be recorded. Like, it's like a little bit of suspense and something to look forward to. Like I'll say, hey, this week, this happened. And we'll see, you know, when I can start walking normal again and stuff like that. Yeah, I, def- I, de- I definitely agree with you on that one, and I'm, I'm definitely happy that I'm having so many podcasts with the one with Jackson, the solo, the one with my dad. It's a lot, um, and my mom, on, on her topic, um, we we may end up um, either having her on and changing the name to, like, I guess the town to end up for three, because that's still an alliteration. It's still or she may, want, she may just want to be a, a special guest one day. Yeah, I was also going to say, we could have a guest or either she could come in here, or we could do what we did with the Jacks, the episode five, I believe, of the couch talk. We could always oh, with Hudson. we could we could always do a um, a Google Meet screen record, and she could do it on she could do it on her email. I can give you the link. But you think the snowman could be a special guest? Bonnie, maybe. I mean, he'll probably just sit here and you know try to lick right. me to death. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and a thing with the a thing with the podcast is well, actually, never mind. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on podcasts, like, overall? Um, I think they're really good and interesting. Um, you don't have to watch them. You could just listen to them if you want, or you can watch them because uh, Sam's podcasts are both in video and audio, so you can watch and listen, or you could just listen. You don't even have to be watching it. Um, and it's, you know, a little more interesting sometimes than just watching TV or a movie because you get to hear people just talking, not being on a script or anything like that and just saying what's on their mind and like Sam said, just whatever comes to their mind and just saying it and talking about all different diverse topics and not having to have a special theme or a special script uh, or one single storyline like a movie or a TV show does. So it's more like 
creative and um, it could be a lot more fun to listen to because you never know what you're going to get. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's about to drop because you never know what you're going to get. Right. Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Uh, I definitely agree. I feel like you really just got to go with the flow. You just got to go with what's happening. And you can't, re you can't really be like just, I guess, like holding up or something. Like you should make it natural. You shouldn't be like, like you shouldn't be like, oh, what, what am I going to talk about? Uh, should I stop? Should I continue? Should I get to this certain time period? What should I do? You shouldn't want to be getting to a certain time period. Like I know I for um, real talk with Sam Weiss in the first episode, I wanted to get to an hour. Sure, that's that's, that's the premiere of the podcast. But you, you really, I guess, what I'm trying to say is you don't want to have a set thing for you. You want to have it all natural. Yeah, I uh, I agree with that. Um, you just uh, just have a natural conversation. Um, and uh, sometimes the viewers can even say if they want to hear about a certain topic. Actually, no, because no. my comments are turned off. Oh, all right. Because I'm actually, no. comments. Right. Um, but... Maybe uh, I can, I tried turning the comments on just for the podcast, but it didn't really work. I think you need them either on all the time or on off the time, or, or off all the time. And I don't think that's really going to work. So, yeah. Um, well, um, trying to think if we want to talk about, like, maybe what movie me and Mom are going to watch tonight. Sure. Um. Uh, I was thinking about on Amazon Prime, I think it would be a good family movie. It's called Herself. It got really good reviews. And it's about a mom who like has an abusive husband and leaves with the two kids and fights for custody of the two kids and builds her own house for her family. So is, is, is it like a drama or like a horror? Or what, 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 what no, kind of more, more like a drama. Yeah, more of like a, a drama type of movie. Yeah, that, that's that does sound actually pretty appealing. I've um I was gonna look on Rotten Tomatoes, which is a site that is good for reviewing movies and stuff like that and TV shows. Uh, and I actually have my Rotten Tomatoes account linked in the in the description of my channel. If you go to hey Sam, account. how many um, Rotten Tomato reviews have you done? Um, I think like two hundred. Oh my god, two hundred ninety about. No way. I. Yes, yes, my. Wow, that is a lot of reviews. That's amazing. So that means you've seen 290 movies slash TV shows that you've reviewed. Definitely more. I can't remember, of course, yeah. but the ones I watched when I was younger. And what I was saying was, in my About section in my, of my channel, you can go and all my social media accounts are linked there. Um, I have, uh, of course, I have my TikTok account, and I have my Goodreads account, and my Rotten Tomatoes account. Make sure to go click on all those three minutes, especially Rotten Tomatoes. You can find my uh, almost 290. I know it's at least 285. I think we're from about 25 to 290. So, yeah, you can go there. And, um, yeah, Rotten Tomatoes, is, uh, it's a, it really is a pretty cool site, I think, where you can do all these reviews, and, uh, you know, you can see other people's audience reviews, right. critic reviews, and top critics. Because critic, if you don't know audience or people that just do it, critics are people that um, not that they don't necessarily work there, but they're like you know like you know people that are in the movie and show business. Yeah, that like have, critics that review uh, in newspapers and magazines. Yeah, that like have that right, and then there's top critic, which are people that work for Rotten Tomatoes that do that review on not like in general on Rotten Tomatoes for oh. a living. They're top critics, and that's how you get certified fresh. No, what do you mean? How, do, how does a movie get rated certified fresh? Uh, well, actually, I've, I've, when I looked into it on Rotten Tomatoes, it was like, there's like, what's Rotten Tomatoes? And it turns out that to be, cert well, uh, I'll start a little back, I suppose. To be rotten, you need a status of less than 60. Less than 60 positive overall reviews. It's out of five stars, usually. For audience, it's out of five, where I believe, if I'm not mistaken... It's um, zero to one star, so half a star and one star, maybe one and a half stars, is oof, that was rotten. Either one and a half or two to three, I think one and a half, I think one and a half to three, so I think half a star and one star is oof, that was rotten. One and a half to two and a half, three, I believe, is meh, and three and a half is it was good, I'd recommend it, four and four and a half is awesome, and five is 
um, cert, uh, cert, like certified fresh uh, must like certified fresh like uh, certified fresh must see or something like that. And if it's less than sixty, it's rotten, which is usually the accumulated scores. Like if like there's like twenty three out of fives, uh, sixty three and a half, seventeen fours. It just depends. Whatever that is. If it's less than sixty, it's rotten, which is a green splat in this place. It's rotten. Okay. Now if it's just I don't even know what it means. Not even if it's fresh, not so certified fresh. Fresh. That usually means in the range of sixty to seventy-five or sixty to seventy-four, I guess. Which is where it's nothing any unusual. Just positive ratings that accumulate to an average score of sixty, seventy-five, or seventy-four. And certified fresh is a is accumulated score of seventy-five plus. With it has to be as good reviews from at least five top critics, I think. Um, it has to stay at 75 for like a certain, it has to stay, stay for a certain while, and it has to have these certain little trinkets to it. Um, so yeah, maybe Certified Fresh is a really good movie, and it don't, even if it says like 70 or something, that seems good, that is not always good. That can be hundreds of bad reviews and hundreds of good reviews. It just really right. has. What do you think it means if like a movie has a really high Rotten Tomato rating, like Certified Fresh, 93, 94, 98, but then the audience score is much lower, like 60 or 70. I was hoping you'd ask me that, actually, because uh, uh, there's, I think there's a good definitive answer to this question. Okay. I feel like the movie critics take movies more seriously. I'll give you an example. Kajillionaire, amazing movie. You probably heard Jax and I talk about it on episode one of Couch Talk which is about three-ish three weeks ago, a little north of that. And it had about 89 Rotten Tomatoes, so certified fresh all the way by the critics, and I think someone in the 50s or 40s from the audience. Really? Really. Uh -huh. Now, reason being, I believe the reason for this is simply being that the critic, that the critics take movies more seriously, they know, they know more about them, and they take it more to heart. The audience likes... The, the difference between the audience and critics is the audience does not care how the movie is made. If, for instance, it's an Adam Sandler movie, those movies can be great, amazing, whoop whoop hooray, like Big Daddy, uh, or uh, you know, you know, maybe the, yeah. the ninety nine Big Daddy, uh, a, a lot of other Sandler movies like Murder Mystery, uh, Uncut Gems, which actually got a great rating from the critics and the Uncut bad. Gems was awesome. That got great from the critics and bad from the audience. Really? Yeah, and um. All I'm saying is, is that the audience doesn't care how it's made. If it's made crappy, as long as they let, get, get some few laughs, it's just a okay. But the critics, Uncut Gems was not a comedy. No, no. Yeah. And but the critics look for something that is more outright uh, well made. Um, that's why they really liked Kajillion there. They thought it was a good, outright, well plotted movie. And a lot of people do not get what the movie's portraying. A lot of people see a family of con artists with a dumb storyline that has no meaning. That's why the audience reviews is that low. I'm one of the only reviewers that gave it a fresh five and a five. A handful gave it three and four, a handful gave it like two or less. But I'm probably in the select five to ten, maybe fifteen people that gave it a nice, certified, fresh, must see of a five and a five, a hundred percent star rating. People, it, it, it really, some people just don't get it, but the critics, they do, and I did, and it's just, so did Jackson. Yeah. I liked it too. Yeah. I can't remember it that well. I sort of remember, and she kind of breaks away from her family and falls in love with another woman. Is that right? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I was I was asking you if they were lesbian, and you didn't. I, I don't think you said yes. Were they? Because they were like kissing at the end. Like, well, if they were kissing, then yeah. I mean. Um, but then, did the family come into the apartment and steal everything at the end? Every single drop of it. But didn't they leave some money behind or something? Yeah, it like resembled like her one old Doyle's one third of a share, like exactly like five twenty right. or something. Which what and, did that well, resemble? What was her name in the movie? Old Doyle. Old Doyle, right? And it, I think the five, like twenty or whatever, the third one came out to all the birthday gifts they bought her. So it resembled something, but it really right. was not good that they stole everything from. Yeah, the girl, uh, I think it was like Melanie's apartment. Right. So right. That, that, that definitely was not a uh, top tier thing uh, at all. So. Yeah, but yeah, that was a really good movie. Yeah, it definitely was a good movie. Uh, 
Do you want to tell the fans about how you how you like Breaking Bad so much? Because I've talked about it a ton on the channel, and they're probably gonna. Um, I yeah, I really like it. Um, I started watching it like a while ago, probably probably like two years ago, and then I stopped, and I just never got back to it, and. I'm not sure exactly why, but now that Sam is caught up with me... I had, actually. Actually, I had. Have you watched any since the last time we watched together? Nope. Good. All right. So, um, I just have to catch up, like, two episodes, and then I'll be at the same episode as Sam, and we I will... I think it's five. And we'll cross the finish line together. Yes, we'll cross the finish line <laughs> and see if Walt gets killed, if uh, Jesse gets killed, if, I guess, I was thinking Walt might, might, Walt might kill Hank or something. What are your predictions about this, about some characters like Walt and Jesse? What do you think is going to happen? Well, I think I'm right now at a point where like Jesse is wants to leave. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, but I don't think Walt's going to let him. Walt's going to convince him to stay. And I think that. I don't know. I can't think of how it might end. I think it'll just end with them maybe taking over and becoming the biggest meth dealers ever and then maybe like turning over the business to someone else or something like that. I'm not sure. I was thinking something of that sort. I mean, I feel like Walt will kill Hank. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. He'll become ruthless. Even though he loves Hank so much, I, no, he'd probably kill him. And I think with Walt and Jesse, I feel like maybe Jesse will like carry on the well, legacy. Well, he has, he has feel, to carry on. I feel like Walt on, Because died. isn't there another show just with Jesse in it? It's called El Camino. El Camino. It's a movie. So he probably does live on if there Which was... means if, if Walt dies. It might, yeah. Where, where did you see that? I think I saw it by like accident or something like that. I, I, just, I just know there. I saw it, El Camino, and that he was in it. Like a commercial or something? No, like on, you know, when you're looking at the on-demands and it has like a little square, and, but I didn't really pay much attention. To yeah, it. Sam, I saw that. And I think I just heard about it. So apparently maybe Jesse carries out the business and Walt dies, or he tries to like... Maybe Jesse kills Walt? Maybe. Because, I mean, you know, Jesse has been, it's, it's been a tight with Walt, and really Walt been taking advantage of Jesse the whole series. He's never really cared for him. No, I he's, mean, he's always been fair to him. Yeah, I guess, but he's taking, he's taking advantage of him now. He, like, he poisoned Brock. Brock? Yeah. Which one's Brock? Did he have a poison number? Oh, the, uh, the guy they brought in to substitute in for Jesse? No, it's a kid. Remember, Jesse's dating that like uh, that that. No, person. Walt had nothing to do with it. She just died from an overdose in her sleep. I thought. No, 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 no! Oh, the girlfriend? No, the girlfriend of Jesse. Yeah. The other one, later on. You, you don't remember? The one with the kid? Yeah, Brock. That who got poisoned and killed, and Walt said he didn't do it, and he betray he betrayed him because he had the ricin, but he did it with like something else. Oh, the ricin. Yeah, remember? Uh, vaguely or something at least. Uh, yeah, vaguely. Wait, he he killed the girl, the yeah, woman, Brock, what? Jesse's girlfriend's son. Oh, Jesse's girlfriend's son, but he, it was an accident. No. Why'd he do it? Well, it was actually, he did it just to, like, get Jesse back in the game, which is really sick. He said he didn't do it, and he, like, he, he like, hid the ricin in Jesse's Roomba, because he knew Jesse would be, like, he, like, he, like, he, like, left his Roomba, would use it. And eventually, like, a week or two or something, maybe even more after, they found a rat was poisoned, and the whole thing was over a while later, you know, while, like, and then yeah, they, just, they, they I, were looking in the Roomba, and and Walt said, "Here's the rice, and see, I I proved it. I proved it to you. I didn't poison him." But then there was a shot of like a rice plant, which he did it with a different rice because he right there's like a plant. Either yeah. you haven't gotten there, I spoiled. No, it. No, no, I got there. 
I know, I just don't remember it that well. Huh. Well, well, this was an excellent first podcast. Yeah, I agree. Should we end it there? I think so. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Why, that, why don't you wrap it up and take us home? Sure, that way, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go on home. And that was episode one of The Talent that Ends Up at Two. If you want to enjoy, subscribe, like, and make sure to hit that notification bell. And, Dad, do you have any uh, closing lines? Uh, it's been a pleasure. Sam, thank you for introducing me to the podcast world, and I yep. look forward to doing many more. Yeah, well, I'll see you guys in one of them today on March the, give me a minute, uh, March the 29th. We should be back for a podcast, episode two. And without any further ado, that was the end, baby. Subscribe, like, and turn on post notifications. And I'll see you guys very soon. Bye, Bye guys. guys.